I'm Leslie and welcome to the Jewelry Studio. Um, so just for y'all today, I have kind of some of my work throughout the ages <laughs> from like my five years being here. Um, and also I'm going to do a quick little demo on how I make some of my pieces. Um, so if you look over here, these are some of the first rings I ever made. And actually this one right here is the first ring I ever made at the Crucible. Um, so this is like a really special piece to me because clearly you can see there's a lot going on with it. It's definitely not my best work. But for me, it's kind of like one of the first pieces I made at the Crucible and one of the first pieces that really got me into jewelry and kind of made me so passionate about the work that I do here. Um, so honestly, um, all of these rings, you can kind of like see my progression of work. There's a lot of improvement in just like refining it and getting soldering. And so these just kind of like are the first steps that I took. This one being my most recent ring. And it's also a really special piece to me because this is actually my friend Elisa's ring who you just met. And these are rings, they're in a matching set and I made rings for every single person in our program last year. So we all have matching mementos of last year. What is the material with some of these beautiful rings? Um, the one that I made for the Fuegos, they're all sterling silver, but all of these ones are nickel and silver as well as one made up in copper. And then speaking of copper, this is a piece that I know um, if some of you have like information on the crucible, you may have seen this piece mm -hmm. on the website. Um, this is a butterfly crown that I made out of copper last year. And definitely it's my first really big piece that I ever made. And it's also really important to me because it kind of inspired me to make bigger scale pieces and kind of showed me that I can do more than I thought originally. Um, and then kind of speaking of crowns, moving on to the pieces that I made this year. This year, compared to the one piece I made last year, I kind of went a little bit crazy. Um, so this year I made kind of a three piece set as well as some earrings to go with it. The first object I made is this crown and it's made out of sterling silver and bronze. Um, this crown is, Oh my god. Um, it took me <laughs> probably a week to make and it's kind of my pride and joy right now. There was definitely a lot of ups and downs in making it. I know just this morning we had an incident where a piece melted and another piece got lost, um, which was definitely hard to deal with, but I think it just helped me a lot with persistence and <laughs> obviously a lot with my soldering skills, which I couldn't have done without my mentor, Ricky. Um, the second piece in this set is a face mask that I made, and obviously this mask is just for decoration. It is definitely not to be used as protection, um, but this mask for me is just kind of my twist on the mask that we've been having to wear because of the pandemic, and it's kind of my way of putting my own little fun spin on something that's become such a staple in our lives. Um, and then finally, I have my last piece, which is a matching set of, I guess, sort of glasses frames to go with it. And this for me was just a really fun piece to make. Um, I was inspired by something I saw online and kind of just wanted to make a third piece to tie in the rest of my work this year. So Leslie, all of these stars you hand fabricated. Um, yeah, so all of the stars on the crown were hand cut and soldered as well as the ones on the glasses. And then for the mask, all of the stars were handmade and I'll be showing you how to make those later. Cannot wait to see how you create these gorgeous stars. Um, and then along with the stars on the rest, I had some free time while I was waiting for pieces to finish cleaning and for them to cool. So I made this set of earrings. Um, and then this one, the hearts are actually, I made for a friend of mine, as well as these two sets of star earrings that I just made to kind of get some more practice with making the stars for the mask. Um, so speaking of stars, if you follow me, I will be doing a really fast demo on how I actually make them. Um, so this is a bench and we use these benches for kind of everything. A lot of cutting, a lot of polishing, and yeah, we kind of just do everything here. Um, um, so this is sterling silver wire and typically in the jewelry studio we use either sterling silver or fine silver. Um, the difference between them is basically sterling silver has extra stuff added in and that kind of allows it to be a little bit stronger, which I liked for using my stars just because they're kind of thin and delicate. Um, so I have the sterling silver wire and I also have this pair of pliers. And if you can see these pliers have a little V shape and they allow me to shape the points for the stars. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to take the wire and we're going to put it in between the pliers. 
And this is just gonna allow us, oops, to pinch it up into a V. And then we're gonna flip it upside down to get the other point. Gosh. And that's gonna give us the other point of the star. And then we can keep doing it along the wire. And basically the way that I've constructed these stars is by kind of creating the entire outline in a straight line and then gradually adjusting the, each of the points on it so that it forms kind of the star. Um, so we're gonna need five of the points to obviously make our star. Okay, so here are the first five and then we're gonna do one more just so we can join it up. And then we're gonna use our wire cutters and these are special wire cutters and they're typically used in making chain and jump rings. And they're just special because unlike some of our other wire cutters, they have a flat point. So it makes it a lot easier later in the process. So you can just cut it off. And then after that, we're gonna take a second pair of pliers. And these pliers are just gonna allow us to bend the points of the stars to fully form the shape. And we're gonna want all of the points that are gonna go out to be a lot smaller and all the points that are going in to be a lot bigger. And typically for silver, just because it's a very thin gauge wire, gauge is how we measure um, the thickness of wire. Um, typically for silver, you don't have to do what we call annealing. And annealing is a process in which you heat metal with a torch and you're gonna get it to a certain temperature. And this is gonna allow kind of the metal to loosen up, which allows it to be more easily worked with. And we do it for a lot of our bigger pieces. So when I was working with my crown, I worked on it for the headband. Um, and I used it a lot last year for the texturing of my butterflies. Um, but since this is such a thin and soft wire, we don't have to do that. So as you can see, we kind of have this little star formed. Um, and then obviously there's a little bit of extra, so we're just gonna take the wire cutters and cut that off so then you have a star. And then the next step of the process is gonna be what we call soldering, and I have another star that's already prepped for that. Um, so basically soldering is a process in which we take this metal and we basically melt it on to another piece of metal and it allows us to join things together and we use it, oh my God, I use it all the time. You basically use it whenever you want to connect things or close it off or just make something stronger. Um, and this is a special type of solder, it's paste solder. Typically solder can come in many forms. One of them is just like a regular stick. And obviously if any of you have any like electrical engineering or computer science background, you may have used solder with soldering circuits. Um, this is slightly different. I'm gonna quickly tie up my hair and put on some glasses because safety first. Um, um, so this is one of our torches. We used to have oxygen propane torches, but we recently switched to these really nice ones that only have one source of fuel. So I'm just going to quickly light it. These are acetylene torches that Leslie is using in our jewelry department. Um, and before I actually start soldering, we're going to do a little bit of prep first. And as you can see, I have this star right here that I've already filed and prepped. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint on some of this liquid in here. Um, this liquid is basically, um, it's a mix of alcohol and borax and we basically use it to keep our metal clean and to kind of like protect it from any outside things that may get on it and prevent us from getting a clean solder. Um, so now what we can do is start heating up the metal. And kind of the key for this is to get the right amount of heat on your metal so that you don't melt it, but you can still melt the solder. And obviously silver is gonna melt at a higher temperature than this solder. So we just have to be a little bit careful about it. And right here is where I'm gonna put on the solder to seal the joint. So I'm just gonna quickly dab on some of this paste solder. And then you can just start heating it up. And the important thing is to come at it from all sides because there are kind of a lot of conditions for, there's some conditions for soldering that you have to keep in mind when you're actually doing it so that you can get a clean connection. 
And one of the first things is solder really likes to flow where there's a lot of heat. So you wanna keep a lot of heat on the joint. And also, like I said earlier, we keep it clean because solder likes going into clean, tight spaces. And as you can see, it's going to start heating up and eventually it's gonna to start to get this kind of shimmery little look. And that's when we know it's soldered. So once, I'm gonna put a little bit more solder just to make sure I get a strong connection. And then you can see that that solder just flowed. So we can turn off our torch and then take it off. And because this is now really hot because of the torch, we're just gonna put it in some water to quench it. And then we have a fully connected star that can be then used for earrings or a mask or a pendant or whatever you wanna put it on. What an incredible demonstration, Leslie. I know I'm first on your commission list for a pair of those beautiful star earrings. Thank you so much. What is your favorite material to work in, Leslie? Um, personally, this year I've been working a lot in silver and fine, um, stone silver and fine silver. Um, so probably one of those, just because each material has definitely pros and cons for working with it. Um, silver itself is a little bit more finicky, so it melts at a lower temperature than the rest. And there's a lot of things that we have to do to keep it clean and to keep the right color. Um, last year I worked a lot in copper, which is a pretty easy metal to work with, and it's one thing that we teach a lot of the campers here to work with first. Um, there's also kind of like bronze and brass, but those metals along with nickel tend to be a little bit tougher to work with just because they have different heating up points and um, just kind of like different things that you have to keep in mind for working with it and making sure that it's pliable enough to actually texture it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks.